Apologies, but if you clicked on this video because of the title, the answer is obviously yes. It's a great phone. Let me just level with you at the top of this video. I'm American, and the current state of North American tech commentary is getting a little bit stale. There's an implied winner in any conversation, either Samsung or Apple, and then everything else is largely deemed lesser than. I can't blame folks too much. Our market is heavily locked up by carrier sales, which then informs an algorithm that heavily reinforces popularity, so producing videos takes a lot of work. Want to get paid for that work? Give the algorithm what it wants. And then I get to spend some time with a rad little import phone, and it just blows this whole conversation out of the water. The Poco label has marched directly into the flagship killer conversation, a company leaning into a marketing discussion of picking the right compromises. This philosophy is absolutely critical to the smartphone market. I can't stress this enough. Different consumers have different needs and will appreciate different pros and cons. Techies say things like, vote with your wallet. We say that a lot, but really living that advice and recommending the right phones to the right consumers is a bigger challenge than just playing with the algorithm. Because when I get to spend some time with a rad little import phone, it just blows that whole conversation out of the water. The F3 is not a phone for everyone. There are some serious compromises to consider. And I could not love this little bugger more if I tried. My next statement is entirely emotional. I feel the division between Xiaomi, Poco, Redmi, and Black Shark is currently the best example today of parting out different hardware features for different consumer needs. Instead of lip service to competition, there are premium tier offerings, gaming solutions, more mainstream price competitors with some healthy overlap between those labels. But even though this phone shares a bunch of internals with a Black Shark, this does not feel like a Black Shark. The F3 also shows a longevity in performance. I'm not particularly impressed with specs junkies seeking out the hottest, newest SoC just to get the bigly benchmark scores. Myself personally, I genuinely try to display place laptop grade use from a phone and the idea of spending 1200 or more on a phone doesn't bother me if it means I don't need to travel with a $2,000 laptop. I personally am looking for every single percentage point improvement I can find, and I know those iterative improvements will come with higher and higher and higher costs generationally. But the F3 is using one of the most stable high performance chips we've seen in recent memory. You get about 80 to 90% of the torque of a more expensive phone, but you're likely to also get a phone that performs more consistently and doesn't run as hot, especially in extended use scenarios. It's my hypothesis that consumer compute needs have been plateauing hard since the Snapdragon 835 back in 2017. The vast majority of consumer phones released today are still less powerful than the top of the line chip from 2018. So if you have a premium tier phone from 2019, you have a level of compute power in your pocket, which we should still rank as significant overkill for even moderately high levels of phone use. And the Poco F3 is a step and a half above that. What I'm saying is this thing is snappy. Very, very few tasks will even make it blink. And we're not talking about an especially expensive phone. It's not in the same kind of budget tier as the Poco M4, which I also really liked, but it's not hard finding this on some really great sales now. There are just so many of the really good lifestyle bits here. We get a nice, vibrant, high refresh rate screen. The speakers are great, nice and loud, full with good clarity. <laughs> Totally competing with far more expensive phones for media playback. We get one of the best power button fingerprint sensors ever packed into a phone. It genuinely makes me cranky going back to in-display fingerprint sensors after using a Xiaomi power button. There's the IR blaster, so you can use this as a universal remote. Just all around, it fits in as this powerful, daily companion computer. Where there are compromises, it's on features that we should increasingly consider more personal preferences. The build quality doesn't feel cheap, but the rear panel 
it picks up smudges in ways that aren't as easy to wipe off and clean as other glass backs. You know, I like the satin feel and this etched design, but there's a slight fogginess to my F3, and it's lived almost exclusively in a case. I'm an old cranky nerd, but my hands can't be that dirty. The camera hardware on tap is still very good if it felt a bit last gen when it launched. Obviously, if you can step up to a higher price tag, you can score some better performers. Again, considering the target consumer, something like 4K video at 60 frames per second probably isn't on their list of needs. But we know this SoC is definitely capable of shooting 4K 60. Xiaomi continues to use USB 2 with no support for things like video output. I'm much more bothered by that on a crazy expensive phone like the Mi 11 Ultra, but I also wish we had it here. This overall software and app strategy still makes me squint a little. There's a significant amount of after-sale monetization that happens on any Xiaomi-labeled product. How ads are displayed, the permissions some apps ask for. There are reasons why we can sell this kind of hardware at such aggressively low prices. And talking about performance and knowing what's inside, the F3 can be a little unrefined in a few tasks. Another brief tangent, the way we review phone performance in the tech enthusiast space is really weak. Maybe you get a game or two and then it's off to a Geekbench score, which is generally a terrible predictor of real world app performance when we're comparing phones. If you're buying phones based on that kind of reporting, it's very likely you're missing out on devices that might serve your specific needs better. Some other gaming examples. The F3 punched above its price tag in the fantasy exploration game Bright Ridge and the wonderfully optimized platformer Dead Cells. It was nicely fluid through fast action sequences and thumper, but it struggled a little with map navigation in the RPG Battle Chasers. And then it cratered bad in the twin stick action titles from 10 Tons, both Neon Chrome and Undead Horde were basically unplayable. Now, you see how I covered a handful of different genres and talked about pros and cons. That's how we would review a laptop, right? And chatting out some other real world apps, the F3 is in a comfortable middle ground. And we can take video rendering as an example. It's not hard finding well-optimized Snapdragon 765s that can outpace the F3 in PowerDirector, especially older LGs loved that app. But then turn around and see some scores in KineMaster that outpace the Duo 2 and the Vivo X70 Pro Plus. Against another Xiaomi, the F3 loses almost every single test I can compare it to against my Mi 11i. But it often loses by a close margin, and it always loses running cooler and throttling less. I run a brutal batch photo processing test in the Mi 11i 1, but performance over the length of that test degraded more significantly than on the F3. Do you want a phone that can finish a laptop grade task 5% faster, or are you okay with a phone that will finish 5% slower, but it'll be cheaper and will run cooler? I think that's an entirely fair question to ask, but there's no way for you to know that as a consumer if tech reviewers don't step up and test performance with real world apps instead of just lazily belching out Geekbench scores. Okay. Getting back on track, wrapping this all up, I see very little on the horizon that gives me concern about recommending a slightly older mid-ranger phone like the F3. We have to keep our expectations in check, especially with aspects like long-term operating system updates. But I feel Poco is doing a phenomenal job of living up to their marketing. Instead of the ridiculous aspirational impossible of more premium labels, this is right in your face. It's right in your face saying, yeah, we didn't put everything in it. Everything you need, nothing you don't. I think a lot of people are gonna vibe with this phone. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing to the channel. All the support is greatly appreciated with the links in the description, maybe shopping a little merch. That really does help keep production rolling on this channel. You can catch a full list of all my affiliates and partnerships in somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider just maybe joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. Patreon.com slash guy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, uh, Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.